This video is brought to you by Renderpool, who are kind enough to sponsor this video. Today we're gonna take a look at Renderpool, a new solution for Blender artists who need a faster render time and want to save up as much time as possible. Similar to other render files we reviewed on the channel, Renderpool is no different. It offers all the good features that would help you render your cycles projects more efficiently and without needing powerful GPUs because all the computations are done directly on the cloud. Renderpool is made available to you by Magrinrat, which provides GPU-based distribution processing solutions, in addition to green data centers all around the world, and a lot of tools and hardware for research and development, just to name a few. But today we are focusing and taking a deep dive into Renderpool. In essence, it is a cloud render service, or in short, a render farm. In other words, it is a large system of highly performant computers equipped with powerful GPUs. Each one is called a node. Hundreds of nodes actually. These nodes help you distribute the render load between them to maximize the render times. And not all render farms are made equal. Some support more 3D packages than others, but today's render farm is aimed specifically at Blender Cycles users and Radeon per render plugin. And you can do that in a fraction of the time it would take on your local machine. So, if you are creating a scene or you are trying to render an animation and you are looking at multiple days of rendering something like a long animation, Renderpool can help you save a lot of time waiting for such renders. This not allows you to save time, but it gives you a lot of artistic freedom as you can see and adjust your result in a very short period of time, which is really great. The service is built and optimized for rendering to help you save time and cost, especially if you are working on a deadline which is the case for a lot of artists. As mentioned before, Renderpool works with Blender Cycles and Radeon Pro Render plugin. For Blender, you have to go through a few simple steps to prepare your file for rendering. First of all, you need to pack your resources. This process archives your Blender textures into your Blend file. To do that, go to File, External Data, and then choose Pack Resources. It is also important to note that there are some files that cannot be packed like cast files or image sequences. These ones have to be separated and you need to set relative paths. To do that, first, make sure that all your files are in the same folder as the blend file. Now, go to the Blender project and go to external data and click find missing files. Then locate your local cache folder location and after that choose make path relative option. This will convert your path from absolute to relative. The third and final step, which is optional, is setting up your file outputs. It is for configuring other render passes that are not specified by the composite node. By doing this, you can export AOV passes to be used for compositing later on on other photo or video editing software. And if you are wondering about the meaning of AOVs, they are simply different passes that can be used in compositing like color fields, masks, mats, depth, and blur data, etc. Any outputs that are set here will be rendered in Renderpool. Now, all you have to do is compress your folder into a zip or RAR file. Also check if your prepared file is working properly. You can easily move it to a different location or open it on a different machine. And if you don't get any warnings of missing files, then you are ready to go. On a side note, ProRender uses RPR or zip files, whereas Blender Cycles uses Blend or zip files. All right. Now it is an excellent time to talk about the website itself. To sign up, all you need is an email. The registration process is really simple and straightforward. And the good thing is, when you first sign up, you will get a $20 worth of trial points to put Renderpool to the test. Unfortunately, the render image will be watermarked. But I guess this is understandable, because the trial is mainly for testing and trying the service. Once you log into your account, your browser should look like something like this. The interface itself is very simple. On the top right corner, you can see your current balance as well as the number of estimated points to be used when rendering. As I mentioned before, trial users will get a watermark on their images. To remove that, you're gonna need to purchase credits and you can do that by clicking on the purchase credit button on the right of the current balance. But we'll talk about purchasing options in the pricing section. On the left, you have the sidebar where you have all your tabs and links. On the home page, you can see what's been uploaded and what has been rendered. To upload a scene for rendering, you need to jump to the upload page under the file manager section. You can either click and select a project 
or drag and drop a file directly from your hard drive when you see the name of your project on the right side. Now hit upload to upload your project to the render pool server. Once the project is uploaded, the speed of which will solely depend on the speed of your internet. And as far as I can see, it doesn't support resuming upload if it fails in the middle. Once the upload is complete, you can click start render to proceed to the queue page. Here you can set the render settings. At the time of creating this video, RenderPool supports three options that are Blender 3.x GPU, Blender 3.x CPU, and Blender Cycles 2.93. The rendering will be carried out based on the settings inside the blend file, but there are some settings that you can override. For example, you can set the sample count in addition to file formats where you can choose among EXR, PNG, or MPEG video. You can also pick the frame rate and the frame range. And finally, on the lower right, you can set the resolution of the render to see an estimation of the cost. This will not override the final render. This is simply for estimation, so the final cost might be lower or higher. Once you are ready, hit start render. After you do that, we'll be taken to the running page. Here you can see all the active render tasks. You can click view details to see the progress of your render. Once the render is finished, you can download the result. And you can also download the output note files by choosing the download AOVs option. Now, let's talk about pricing a little bit. It is divided between CPU and GPU usage time. One GPU minute on the basic plan using AMD Radeon RX 700 XT will cost $0.03. On the CPU side, the basic plan on Ryzen Threadripper 2920X will cost you the same which is $0.03. So the standard is $0.30 per CPU and GPU. But actual rendering and pricing may differ as RenderPool uses multiple parallel CPUs and GPUs when it comes to rendering. But you can also always refer to the render estimate when starting any job. If you are interested in RenderPool, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.